Hello everyone and welcome to Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian. In the news, the Sulphur Springs City Council could soon be asked to consider a new ordinance which would establish uh, regulations for tire stores, according to City Councilman Jimmy Lucas. The main issue, according to City Manager Mark Maxwell, is large stockpiles of old and scrap tires outside of tire businesses presenting potential health and safety issues. Lucas said the matter was first brought to his attention when a family member was bitten by numerous mosquitoes before she could enter a residence of one of the patients that she cared for as a home care nurse. Lucas investigated and he too received numerous mosquito bites. Numerous old and scrap tires were observed nearby outside a tire business. Lucas said he and city officials have looked into the matter, noting that an ordinance would help address the problem. An ordinance is being drafted and may well be available uh, to present at the June 4th council meeting. Members of the Dairy Festival uh, Board recognized their sponsors during a media meet and greet and photo op on Wednesday morning. The event included visits to various uh, Dairy Festival sponsors, and it began at the Southwest Dairy Museum. Other stops included the Propane Company, PCI, Sulphur Springs Dodge, and to the Extension Service Office to meet Dairy Max representatives. Dairy Festival will be taking place June 7th through the 15th to promote the Treehouse Christian Homeschool's annual picnic in the park, which is set for this evening, May 30th at 5 p.m. at the Yantis Community Center, we discovered the creative minds of two of the Treehouse students of Mrs. Belt's writing class, Jonathan Graham and Ariel Stone. Well, I am 15 years old. I have never been in a public school, actually never inside one. <laughs> um, and we live uh, seven miles outside of Quitman. Um, Sadly, we're going to be moving to Childress because of my dad, uh, my dad's job. Okay. Um, but we'll still keep, we'll still, keep, we'll still keep in touch. Um, and you will continue to be homeschooled. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Do you think you'll take the experiences of Treehouse with you wherever you go? Probably so. Okay. This was the, it was very valuable experience going to the Treehouse okay. these last two years. So. Wonderful. We're going to hear more about that. And what will you tell us about yourself, Jonathan? <sighs> My name is Jonathan Graham. I am 12 years old. I am in sixth grade. I live in Quitman, Texas. Um, I like to play drums and just... Okay. Yeah, I'm homeschooled and... You had some weather experience yesterday. Yes. Um, Did you actually, like, see this tornado? Yes, I, I saw the tornado and... Oh. It was pretty, pretty big. It really makes us wake up and realize the, the power yeah. out there. Well, uh, you mentioned playing drums. You play at church. Mm -hmm. And, Ariel, you play something? Um, I play the violin at our um, First Baptist Church equipment. Um, what's funny was that I was actually at uh, practicing at that church the moment that there was a tornado siren. And um, it was first for me, first time for me to hear a tornado siren, and that was pretty scary, but... Thankfully, um, our church wasn't blown to the ground. Okay. It was the first tornado I have ever seen, and it blew me away. It was the first blew tornado. <laughs> like, my whole family, my sister, my brother, my mom, my dad, first tornado we all have seen. It was pretty big. Yeah. Well, it's time for all of us to really wake up to the, the power of nature around here in the, our part of Texas and be prepared. But this evening now, you guys have an event. So it is the Treehouse Picnic in the Park. Ariel, would you like to tell us where and all? Well, honestly, I haven't really been told much about it. I've never been to Well, actually, I have been to one. Um, but this one's going to be outside, unlike the normal ones that we've had. Um, Yantis Community Center. Yeah. 102 South Main in Yantis. Okay. From 5 to 8. From 5 to 8 o'clock this evening. And so the things that are... That, the public is invited to come and take part in, include um, all kinds of fun things, and getting to know these students, mm -hmm. Ariel, Jonathan, and others, and mm -hmm. their works this year. So let's talk about um, 
before we get to the things that you've done, this is their major fundraiser for the year. So if the public will come, it will be a uh, benefit to both. So the plays. Mm. The plays. Um, so well, Jonathan hasn't been in one of them because that was part of the writing class that Miss Sharon was having, and he wasn't in the writing class. Um, okay. I guess I'll elaborate on that one first. Okay. So Frostbite is written by um, Tristan Garrison. Is it? Yeah, Tristan Garrison. And um, it's about this guy named Andrew who gets stuck in like this... I don't even know. They didn't really explain much. Like this underground laboratory or something. And he has to find a way out with um, this other guy. I can't remember his name. Um, and uh, let me see. That's pretty, that's pretty much it. Okay. And I, I wrote the screen credits, not nothing big. Um, but Tristan's going to be editing it. Um, so you wrote the screen credits, did the narration. Uh, no, not the narration. That's, that's, that was that's no, missed. Yeah, that's for uh, the other play that I did. Okay. But tell me about, now, let's just switch and ask you about your acting in our oh, area. Oh, yeah. I've been acting since I was like eight years old. Um, one was uh, a play called, I was the main character in um, a Swan Princess play. The next was um, a, what's it called, Robin Hood. Um, I was the sheriff's daughter. After that, I believe, was um, a modernized version of Cinderella, and I had a very small part in that one. After that... Sorry, I'm trying to remember. It's been, it's been a while. <laughs> well, you have had some uh, some acting that you've already been in, mm -hmm. and you really like that. Yeah, it's it, it's pretty fun. Um, the most recent play I was I was in had a pretty small part, and honestly, I I do not like small parts. I want to be like the main <laughs> character. Okay. I want to be like yeah, right. Yeah. Go for it, girl. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, let's switch over and talk about the Promised Land. So, Jonathan, you were in this one. Yes, uh, Promised Land. It's about a ten-year-old boy. Is it? Ten -year -old yeah, ten-year-old boy named Tiny, um, played by my friend Raleigh Rhodes, um, and he lives in Russia and he later later back in his life he was trafficked and set in like some sort of prison thing underground Russian under, underground Russian lab prison thing but know. he escapes and he tells his uh, family all about it and then he's wanting to stop it so his mom calls um, a general from General Wolfshire. Yeah, General, general Wolfshire, Wolfshire from from what's it called? England. Uh, England. And he he tries to. Well, he does. He helps Tiny go and save all these kids who are being trafficked. But you play this part, don't you? Yes, I. Well, I play uh, Zakar. The um, like. Zakar. Zakar, the leader of the traffickers. Well, not the leader, of, no. but... Not, he's more like a... He's actually Tiny's dad. Yeah, he's yeah. Tiny's okay. dad. Because his tiny dad turned out mm -hmm. to be one of the ones that were helping out with yes. the whole thing. But I don't think we should probably but, spoil it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was this. trying not to do. Yeah, I, I wrote um, The Promised Land and edited it and added music. Um, <laughs> okay. Yes. And uh, learned... Accents you learned. Yes, mm -hmm. accents. I learned the accents. What about costuming, props, set? Oh, did you guys I, take part in all this? Yeah. Um, I didn't. I, I was just a narrator in the. We, the whole class. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Produce sound effects, music for the mm -hmm. place. So, Promised Land and Frostbite, two plays mm -hmm. that you guys have uh, written and produced. Mm -hmm during this year. Frostbite is from the writing class, whereas the Promised Land was from the digital storytelling class. Um, those are the two classes that Miss Sharon uh, hosted. Or digital storytelling. Taught. That sounds just so intriguing. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating. I learned as much as the kids did this year about how to put things on computers and then get it up. Um, anthologies, though, from actual writings that you have done, like uh, stories, poems, this will, from last year, are going to be offered at this event this evening. Mm -hmm. And this year's anthology, which is a collection of all your work, will mm -hmm. be ready soon. Yep. Is that right? Later in the summer? Okay. So what have 
you written otherwise besides these plays? What would you like to tell us about? Um, and is, was this done in the right stuff classes? Yeah, or? this was just the right stuff class for the anthology. Do you do comic strips? Uh, yes, I, I did some comic strips. I do too, by the way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, so do you take your uh, influence from comic strips that you s read now? I love the Calvin and Hobbes comic strip. I uh, my dad gave me a couple books, and I just I just love them ever since. And that's kind of what influenced my um, love for comics. Okay. Um, that's that, that's my story. <laughs> mm. I I don't know. I just I, I love reading comics like the Dennis the Menace of okay. comics yeah and I don't know just okay. reading them helps me to um yeah I, I made a I made a comic on bullying about what was his name I literally just forgot his name <laughs> was it Captain 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 Kind yeah, yeah. and um he he's like a superhero who tries to get the world to stop stop <clears throat> bullying people. Wasn't he associated with like carrots or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I named him at first. Uh, the kind carrot. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just weird. But um, cause uh, my original comic, he this kid he's getting bullied at the beginning. He's like. This this bullier is trying to get him, trying to beat him up because he this kid likes carrots and he hates carrots. He's like, why do you like carrots? Everybody else hates carrots, but Captain Kind he can like hear from very far away and he can, he just flies, flies to the rescue and he's like, hey, quit picking on this kid. That's not nice. It doesn't matter if he likes carrots. He's just being himself. Well, I like that and, too. And yeah. thank you for it, that. Didn't you make that comic on that? On a like it like it's digital like you didn't draw yeah. it yeah mm. I I I did it amazing did work y'all are doing so comic strips nonfiction personal stories even artwork poetry and more will be in this coming anthology but mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. people come tonight they can see all this on display mm -hmm. is that right we gotta invite them to get there so just to find out a little bit more your favorite genre to read or write oh my gosh I love sci-fi I can't get enough I can of tell it. you. <laughs> Um, um, I like I like mystery mystery books. Those are. What's the most fun favorite. thing you've done in Treehouse? Let's say this year. Um, most fun activity. Miss Sharon's class and. I like Miss Debbie Rhodes class and Miss Sharon's class geography. In okay. digital storytelling. Okay. For me, it would be Miss Sharon's writing class. That I, I have so much fun in, in that one. Mm -hmm. And what ha what's the best thing you've learned this year at Treehouse, Ariel? Um, I've learned that there are going to be quite a few things that you may not want to do. But according to Miss Sharon, um, you still have to put 100% effort into it. And even if you don't like it, it'll still be awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. That's that's pretty much the same as okay. me. Okay, that's mm -hmm. good to know. Well, so this evening, let's once again go back to invite the people to uh, the community center at Yantis, 102 South Main, which is on the corner of... 1977 and 1970 out there. It's the Treehouse Picnic in the Park this afternoon, 5 to 7, is that right? 5 to 8. And it is a major fundraiser. There's going to be cupcake walks, games, awards. The two films, Frostbite and uh, Promised Land, will be shown and written, directed, and acted by the students. And also raffle for two nights stay at Rainbow Cove Retreat at Holly Lake Ranch, a basket auction and a lot more picnic lunches for purchase. It is uh, going to be a lot of fun. And also the anthologies will be offered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you'll get to know students like these a lot better this evening. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So please plan to attend. In sports, it's been a spring of change for the Wildcats and Lady Cats coaching staffs, and athletic director Greg Owens indicates more changes may be on the way. Here's what the school board has approved and been advised of so far. Lady Cats volleyball coach Justin Manus has retired from coaching, but will continue to teach at high school. 
Bailey Dorner has been approved as the new Lady Cats volleyball coach to replace Coach Manus. Lacey Jessup has been approved as a volleyball assistant. Lady Cats basketball assistant coach Tyler Lindsay has resigned. Uh, Caitlin Webster has been approved as a basketball assistant coach for Lady Cats head basketball coach Brittany Tisdale. Wildcats basketball assistant Philip Manning has resigned to take a job as an assistant at Plano. The board has approved a new assistant coach for Wildcats head basketball coach Clark Cipolletta. He's Joe Garcia. Lady Cats head soccer coach Joel Bailey has resigned coaching but will continue to teach at the high school. Wildcats assistant soccer coach Javier Aguayo is the new Lady Cats head soccer coach and hired as uh, Lady Cats soccer assistant is Christoph Garcia. Former Lady Cats soccer assistant Ross Hicks will continue to teach at high school and also coach cross country and track distance runners. Wildcats soccer coach Alexi Upton has a new assistant to replace Aguayo. He's Salvador Mejia. Again, we're told that more changes are coming later. The first of the SSISD summer sports camps conclude Thursday as it's day three of the Wildcat football camp for boys entering the third through the seventh grade at the multipurpose building. Baseball camp will be taking place next week, Tuesday through Thursday, in the multipurpose building. There will be two baseball camps, one for boys entering first through third grade and one for those entering the fourth through the ninth grade. The following week brings girls basketball, boys basketball, and soccer camps. Boys and girls soccer camp is planned for June 24th through the 27th. And camps for volleyball, tennis, and uh, also, entering 8th and ninth grade football players will take place uh, the week beginning Monday, July 29th. Complete information for all of the camps is available on the school district website at www.ssisd.net. And that's Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian. Thank you for joining me, and so long, everybody. One of the things that... Uh to be considered um, is for Ocean Spray and abatement, I believe. Yeah, so they have uh, actually two abatements okay. uh, with the city where the, the city council voted to grant a tax abatement for equipment that was being installed. And in return, uh, they had a responsibility. Generally, we do it for job creation, to create jobs. But in this case, the council just said, okay, Look, there, as long as we don't lose jobs, right. we're fine. Just hold it where you are. And I forget the exact numbers, approximately 140. Okay. Well, as it turns out, um, that's not happening. They're, they're, whether, whether by layoff or attrition, they've lost some positions and don't intend to replace them. And so the question that the council was faced with at the last meeting uh, is, um, what do we do? Do we say that's okay? Do we revoke the abatement? Do we revoke it on some percentage? And and uh, so they tabled that, and we're bringing it back to them this time, uh, and uh, we'll bring it back to them with some numbers. Okay. And uh, so they'll. Uh, it's going to be staff's recommendation to revoke the okay. abatement entirely. Yes. Just they, they, they are not meeting the terms of it? And yeah, it was, you know, we didn't ask much. Right. What we did ask for didn't happen. Just asked them to maintain the level. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Um, and, and so that will put um, that back on the, full, fully on the tax rolls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it, the, we weren't abating the value of the plant. It's just the, the few million that went for equipment. And uh, we have a um, what, another thing that um, being considered uh, renaming one of our city streets or a section of it. Yes, yeah, so we've gotten a request uh, to rename a portion of Jackson Street 
I think the portion is from College Street to Martin Luther King, um, but I got to confirm that uh, to uh, J. D. Franklin Street, okay. uh, and, and and a petition to go along with the request, uh, signed by near as I can tell, just about everybody that lives on the street. So, uh, and, yeah, well, yeah, being favorable, and 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 I asked for that when the first idea first came up because I don't want to relive Bill Bradford Road. Right. <laughs> so let me know. Let us know that the 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 residents are in favor of it. Okay. And so we have a petition that says exactly that. Well, how did uh, that renaming, how did that come about? Uh, somebody just came and said, look, this is a, you know, a pillar of our community and we'd like to get the street renamed. And I said, great, get me a petition. And by golly, one showed up. Okay, so it's, it, seems that it's so, it seems favorable. So it uh, seems like that uh, likely. <laughs> I hope it goes smoothly, yes. Okay. All right. And, um, and there, there are a couple of, of other things on there. Um, what, what else can we... Um, tire ordinance. Yes. Yes, a tire ordinance. Yes. Yeah, so um, on the agenda is an ordinance regulating um, scrap tires. Okay. Um, and sp specifically, it'll do three things. It'll make a tire store that stockpiles their tires for a while before they send them out to the landfill or whatever they do. Uh, it'll make them shield the tires from the public view. It'll make them cover the tires so that rainwater doesn't build up inside the tires. Uh, and it will limit the number of tires. And the way the ordinance is written now, it'll limit them to a thousand tires. That could change. Um, but we're, you know, we've, we've gotten a few operations in town where they just the tires keep piling up and don't seem to be going away, and we've focused on one of them recently and and um, got got them gone. But we think that it would be nice if we had an ordinance that set out the rules so everybody knows these are the rules you got to play by. Okay, so this is a, a kind of a preemptive just to, to prevent. Well, it's it's more than it's it's a bit reactionary because we're having a problem. Right. Um, and, and the problem is mosquitoes. The, uh, you know, a couple of these operations are right behind residences and they're just getting, you know, it's small a, children are being carried away by these mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're trying to put an end to that. Okay, so just a, a health... Yes, very no. health and safety. Okay, all right. And um, so, they, so they're going to have to, they'll have to have them shielded so you can't, so you can't see them. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to have them covered. To, mm -hmm. So either a building or a tarp. Uh, and uh, you can only have so many. Okay. So that's, uh, that's short term. Uh, long term, we're working on something that, uh, that the public needs to know about. Okay. There's, um, we think we can actually use the tires in street construction. Uh, there's a new method called mechanical concrete. Uh, I've been in discussions with the commissioners about this. Uh, we're going to do a little test uh, out in Wade Bartley's precinct. He's got a low water crossing that keeps washing out. Um, and if that works, and we think it will, uh, it, um, it'll be a way, we'll turn the tires into a resource mm -hmm. instead of trash. And, and so the I, what I envision is the county entering into an agreement with the city, a, a joint cooperative agreement, where we uh, we cut the sidewalls out of the tires and stockpile what's left, throw out the sidewalls, and start using them in road construction. And so I'm going to give you a video that shows you that process, and, and I'd like you to play that okay. so people can see what we think is coming down the road. Okay. All right. So it's... Now, as far as, as that process, um, is there going to be a little, a little bit of, uh, I, obviously, if we're going to have to cut them up, there's, we're going to have to have something to do that with. Yeah, there's a machine. There are several different varieties of the machine that just cut the sidewalls out. And basically, you put it up on a roller and two knives come in and the tire spins around and the sides pop off. Okay. Uh, and the premise uh, of mechanical concrete is uh, the, the strength of a road is in its rock in the road base that's underneath the asphalt or concrete or whatever it is. And 
And when you drive over the rock enough, it flexes and you start pushing it out, especially if you're driving over it with heavy trucks and you end up with potholes and the sides slough off. And mechanical concrete says, okay, if we could confine this rock, and in, 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 uh, it's a lot stronger, like three to four times stronger. And there are systems out there, like honeycomb systems, that you push the rock off into and it stays put and then the roads last a lot longer. But they're expensive. So the retired director of the Virginia Department of Transportation invented mechanical concrete, he calls it, and instead of honeycombs, it's just tires with the sidewalls cut out and they hold the rock in place and it's been tested in several places, one of which is San Antonio. Uh, and it works really, really well. So, you know, you know, imagine you build a road and you expect three times the life out of it. Hallelujah. That, that's, you know, yeah. right. wear and tear on, your, on the, the vehicles plus money saved. Right. And so we're thinking, and this is just off the top of my head, maybe this is um, a good pilot for um, Pipeline Road. So the county wants Pipeline Road. They, they, want they, they let that be known. And, and so they could participate. The city could participate. The landowners adjacent to it could participate. Maybe we could get it done. Right. And did it done, get it done in such a way that it'll last a long time, that we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, running back out there in five or ten years and rebuilding the street. So, um, Please play that. Uh, I'll give you a, a, a link to a video, okay. and I would love the public to be able to see that video. Okay. Um, now, as far as the, the machinery and the equipment, is that something, a shared oh. cost? or? Yeah, I'm sure that would be a shared cost. Oh, and here's the kicker. Is you get county trustees to do the labor. Okay. So suddenly these tires are a resource, and um, <laughs> we use them to extend the life of road projects. Now would this be something that the, some of these businesses that maybe have a, have a big stockpile, is that something they could, they would be Well yeah, to that's just or? it. And so, so um, they're paying two dollars a tire for a tire recycling operation to come pick them up. Right. We think we could do it for a dollar a tire. And this is a, this is a um, patented process and the licensing fee is a dollar a tire. Okay. okay. We charge a dollar a tire, we get the trustees to cut the sidewalls out, and voila. Okay, we, so solve, you know, we solve a couple of different problems in one fell swoop. Okay, and it's a, just a, a potentially call, um, for the, the startup to get the, what we need. It's not very expensive. I mean, some of these things, I, I, I've seen these sidewall cutters that our, uh, our high school class, welding class, mm -hmm. could make up in a weekend. Wow. Okay. And then there are others that are a lot more complicated. This, this is not a great big, huge machine we're no, talking about. No, this it's, is, no, no. Not it's like a vehicle. Half the size of this desk. Okay. You know, um, some of them are more complicated, but right. you know, we'll probably start off pretty simple, see how it goes, and okay. if we need to ramp up, we'll ramp up. Now the, the, the sidewalls and things that you cut off and toss away, is that something you're going to be able to put into trash? Or They'll go to the it? landfill. Okay. Now, you, now they, there are some uses for them. Like for example, you see these cones on the interstate, they're wide cones. They're maybe you know, 18 inches at the bottom and mm -hmm. 15 really inches at the top. You use those to weight it down. You put several of those okay, on it. So, so some of it can be used, but there's, there's not enough cones in the world to, <laughs> to, to use all those sidewalls on. So really, a lot of it will end up in the, uh, in the landfill. Okay. So we have some, some potential there to not only benefit city and county, um, but also um, help out some of, these, some of the businesses. Mm -hmm. and, and the residents near them. And, and yeah. get those stuff the, yeah. so those it's out just, of there. It's like a perfect storm of ideas came together. And okay. Um, and, and as far as um, a pipeline, hopefully, you know, get a yeah. road open. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we get a road out of it. Okay. No, and you, I know the county, the county. This is something that they're very interested in seeing happen. Um, no, would they be respond after that? Would they, the county, be responsible for that road, or would the city continue to? Oh, we haven't got that far down the road yet. Something still to. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to want us to be responsible for it since it's in the city limits. But right. You know, my yeah, we'll get into all that later. 
get the process started and, mm -hmm. and go from there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, are there um, any other things to kind of um, keep an eye out for or, or coming up um, that our council is going to be um, looking at or considering? Well, that's it for now, but we're, we're heading into uh, budget season and we're doing our staff work on budget now. And in August and September, you'll see the council dealing with budget issues and, okay. and we'll get it adopted probably the last week of September. Okay, so we'll, for the next couple of months, we hard hitting it, city staff, getting things mm -hmm. together. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right now, uh, a couple of projects we've got going are, of course, Connolly Street and Sunset Street. Sunset Street, we're waiting on Atmos to relocate their gas line. It's a little too shallow and we don't want to yeah. hit it when we start right. cement stabilizing the road. And as soon as that's done, we're ready to start building the street itself because the water line and sewer line is already done. Okay. Connolly Street, we're, the sewer line is done, we're rebuilding the water line, and we're about half done with that. Okay, so we've still got a, a ways to go on that. Yeah, and you see all the pipe out there. That's actually for drainage. That has to be done as well. We're, there's a portion of the street that will take drainage underground, and it'll come out in this north town branch here. Okay, so we're in, in progress, but... Yeah. 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 Wait. We just paved our last two streets that were on the, we used to call it the summer paving program, but it never happens in summer, so we call it the, the annual paving program or something like that. And uh, we just did uh, Locust from Houston to, to Maine and, did, and we had a little bit of asphalt left over, so we did the northernmost block of Mulberry and, and that was at least half funded by the street maintenance fee of five dollars that's on the water bill we had uh, several streets that were repaved and we've done stories on that before right. but these were the last two that just got done in the last i don't know two weeks or so so for, for this this uh fiscal cycle we're with the we're paving done. program we're done mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just working on but the new fiscal cycle starts october 1. Okay. We're, we're coming up just gotta get there mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and and for the the streets that um, you'll have redone, um, I know Locust has the and and the the, the piece have the asphalt. Um, now, are some of them uh, had to, to to stabilize them, make them? Well, that's what we did on most of them is cement stabilizing. So you mix in Portland cement with the rock and sand that are, that's there and wet it down and it sets up and it's not as strong as concrete but it's a whole lot stronger than it used to be and then you build your street on top of that and it lasts longer okay so we've done a, done a little little extra or, or mm -hmm. so that hopefully it's not a complete rebuild but it's more than just an overlay with a lot more so we uh trying to try to stress that dollar out it last longer mm -hmm. better better to try one yeah and and it's especially important for us because we know that even with the increased street fee, we know that our street program is still only half funded. And so if we're underfunded, we really have to make those dollars stretch. Okay. So, um, so the, the rest of it comes out of the city budget? Well, yeah. So there's general fund revenue and street fee revenue combined is half funded. Right. The other half just isn't being done. And we know that, but it's just incredibly expensive. And so the council has, they wrestled with that issue it, the, um, well, several months ago and they said, okay, we have got to do something about this. We need, we need a street fee, right. a street maintenance fee. And they adopted $5 because, you know, if, you're, if your streets are deteriorating at a certain rate and you're only half funding it, they're still deteriorating. Right. Just not as quickly. Right. And so the... This, I expect them to wrestle with it again this year. Okay, so it's, it's something that's probably uh, regularly, um, as far as the street maintenance fee, mm -hmm. just. Uh, yeah, yeah. But but it provides much needed funding to get those roads. It does, and people know that. And 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 the I was really surprised there was very little resistance on it because people knew the the only the only. Um, question that was brought up in public session was a gentleman asked is this all going to be set aside in a fund that it can be only used for streets and the answer was yes and he was happy and I think I think that's reflective of most of the public is 
as long as they know the streets are, it's going two streets and only streets, they're happy. And that's exactly right. what we're doing. Okay. And, and you all have a process that, you all, that is used to determine which streets are. Yeah, going. yeah. And if you would like a, a list of all of the streets that we're looking at, and we always take a portion of them in, the, in any given year, um, I can get that for you over in engineering. And you can see what got done this last year and what's more or less next on the list, but we massage it every year depending on what happened on this street in the last 12 months, you know. Right, if there was something that... Things can suddenly change. You know, you have a couple, you have one bad ice storm and a street that was teetering on the edge will go over the edge and, and now it's time. Okay, and now when, when you all have those, those type of things um, between, you know, the paving um, program, is that do y'all uh, y'all have uh, some things that y'all do to strengthen it until y'all can do uh, major repairs? Or? Not much. We patch potholes until it's time. So there's 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 three levels of activity in in a pavement management system, mm -hmm. and the cheapest and uh, easiest to do is to run out and patch some potholes. And so you'll you know you see every month I report to the council the number of potholes we pass and it's significant. And then the next level is overlay mm -hmm. the street you know the summer right. paving program, right? Annual paving program, and that's that's something more. And what that what that does is let me show you the streets don't deteriorate on a straight on a straight line. They deteriorate on a curve. And if I could show you what that curve looks like. So if this is a graph where this axis is the condition of the street and this axis is time, when you, and this is day zero when you build a new road, asphalt streets tend to slowly deteriorate and then suddenly drop off. And what you, and what, what um, a pavement, what overlaying is, is trying to catch it right about here and rewrite the curve so that it, we extend it, right? And we extend it again and we do that a couple times and we can't extend it anymore. We've lost the base. And, and, and so some, so this is an issue we deal with a lot is somebody that lives on a street that's already down here somewhere that is awful and they see us redoing a street it's yeah. not nearly as bad. They call us up and say, what are you thinking? My street is so much worse. And they're right. The street is worse. But this street needs more than an over overlay. That street needs to be completely rebuilt. For a much smaller price, we can take this street and push it out 15 years. And we don't have to worry about it. And then we come back to the streets that need a complete rebuild. Okay. So some, sometimes the streets that may need more significant work may have to, to wait a little bit they longer. They do, and they do wait funding. a little bit longer. And, and it seems really counterintuitive uh, to, to the average homeowner. But in fact, there is a method to the madness. Okay. All right, so just a process and work, get there and get them done. Yeah. And so you can help get the word out about why. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, and, and I'm sure you probably get that a lot. You know, why is my street? I don't. Every year, every time we pave streets. <laughs>